Chapter Five of the Story of Doctor Doolittle by Hugh Lofting. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Fifth Chapter: The Great Journey. Now for six whole weeks they went sailing on and on over the rolling sea, following the swallow who flew before the ship to show them the way. At night she carried a tiny lantern, so they should not miss her in the dark, and the people on the other ships that passed said that the light must be a shooting star. As they sailed further and further into the south, it got warmer and warmer. Polynesia, Chi-Chi, and the crocodile enjoyed the hot sun no end. They ran about laughing and looking over the side of the ship to see if they could see Africa yet. But the pig and the dog and the owl, Tutu, could do nothing in such weather, but sat at the end of the ship in the shade of a big barrel, with their tongues hanging out, drinking lemonade. Dab-Dab the duck used to keep herself cool by jumping into the sea and swimming behind the ship, and every once in a while, when the top of her head got too hot, she would dive under the ship and come up on the other side. In this way, too, she used to catch herrings on Tuesdays and Fridays, when everybody on the boat ate fish to make the beef last longer. When they got near to the equator, they saw some flying fishes coming towards them, and the fishes asked the parrot if this was Dr. Doolittle's ship. When she told them it was, they said they were glad, because the monkeys in Africa were getting worried that he would never come. Polynesia asked them how many miles they had yet to go and the flying fishes said it was only fifty-five miles now to the coast of Africa. And another time a whole school of porpoises came dancing through the waves, and they too asked Polynesia if this was the ship of the famous doctor, and when they heard that it was, they asked the parrot if the doctor wanted anything for his journey. And Polynesia said, Yes, we have run short of onions. There is an island not far from here, said the porpoises, where the wild onions grow tall and strong. Keep straight on. We will get some and catch up to you. So the porpoises dashed away through the sea, and very soon the parrot saw them again, coming up behind, dragging the onions through the waves in big nets made of seaweed. The next evening, as the sun was going down, the doctor said, Get me the telescope, Chi-Chi. Our journey is nearly ended. Very soon we should be able to see the shores of Africa. And about half an hour later, sure enough, they thought they could see something in front that might be land. But it began to get darker and darker, and they couldn't be sure. Then a great storm came up, with thunder and lightning. The wind howled, the rain came down in torrents and the waves got so high that they splashed right over the boat. Presently there was a big bang. The ship stopped and rolled over on its side. "'What's happened?' asked the doctor, coming up from downstairs. "'I'm not sure,' said the parrot, "'but I think we're shipwrecked. Tell the duck to get out and see.' So Dab-Dab dived right under the waves, and when she came up she said they had struck a rock. There was a big hole in the bottom of the ship. The water was coming in, and they were sinking fast. "'We must have run into Africa,' said the doctor. "'Dear me, dear me. Well, we must all swim to land.' But Chi-Chi and Gub-Gub did not know how to swim. "'Get the rope,' said Polynesia. "'I told you it would come in handy. Where's that duck? Come here, Dab-Dab. Take this end of the rope. Fly to the shore and tie it to a palm tree, and we'll hold the other end on the ship here. Then those that can't swim must climb along the rope till they reach the land. That's what you call a lifeline. So they all got safely to the shore, some swimming, some flying, and those that climbed along the rope brought the doctor's trunk and handbag with them. But the ship was no good any more with the big hole in the bottom and presently the rough sea beat it to pieces on the rocks, and the timbers floated away. Then they all took shelter in a nice dry cave they found high up in the cliffs till the storm was over. 
When the sun came out next morning, they went down to the sandy beach to dry themselves. Dear old Africa, sighed Polynesia, it's good to get back. Just think, it'll be a hundred and sixty-nine years tomorrow since I was here. And it hasn't changed a bit. Same old palm trees, same old red earth, same old black ants. There's no place like home. And the others noticed she had tears in her eyes. She was so pleased to see her country once again. Then the doctor missed his high hat, for it had been blown into the sea during the storm. So Dab-Dab went out to look for it, and presently she saw it, a long way off, floating on the water like a toy boat. When she flew down to get it, she found one of the white mice, very frightened, sitting inside it. "'What are you doing here?' asked the duck. "'You were told to stay behind in Puddleby.' "'I didn't want to be left behind,' said the mouse. "'I wanted to see what Africa was like. I have relatives there. So I hid in the baggage and was brought onto the ship with the hardtack. When the ship sank I was terribly frightened, because I cannot swim far. I swam as long as I could, but I soon got all exhausted and thought I was going to sink. And then, just at that moment, the old man's hat came floating by, and I got into it, because I did not want to be drowned. So the duck took up the hat with the mouse in it, and brought it to the doctor on the shore, and they all gathered round to have a look. "'That's what you call a stowaway,' said the parrot. Presently, when they were looking for a place in the trunk where the white mouse could travel comfortably, the monkey Chi-Chi suddenly said, "'Shh! I hear footsteps in the jungle!' They all stopped talking and listened, and soon a black man came down out of the woods and asked them what they were doing there. "'My name is John Doolittle, M.D.,' said the doctor. "'I have been asked to come to Africa to cure the monkeys who are sick.' "'You must all come before the king,' said the black man. "'What king?' said the doctor, who didn't want to waste any time. "'The king of Jolly Jinky,' the man answered. "'All these lands belong to him, and all strangers must be brought before him. Follow me.' So they gathered up their baggage and went off, following the man through the jungle. End of chapter 5